Good afternoon, Scott Rudd, T3 Live. Welcome to today's recap. So you're going to be reading every headline about rallies across the board, equities in fuego. <laughs> Meanwhile, I think we're right back to where we were when we broke down last week. So the, the whole range bound trade that we've seen in 2015 for our markets pretty much is still intact. So, you know, as a trader, we like to buy high and sell higher. We like to find stocks breaking out. We like to look for tight patterns. And unfortunately, they've been far and few between. But there are ranges to trade and things to do. And sometimes you just have to be very, very specific. And as far as today is concerned, you know, if you're on the VTF, uh, I think the Dow is up 244 points by 942, stayed there all day, and then went up, what, 295 at the high? And then at the end of the day, gave you a little bit of a pullback. So basically closed right around where it opened. And if you did not come in long, it was very hard to make money, especially in the indices. And really last week, they didn't give me any clue to be that long because of the potency of the down moves. You know, I came in long, um, the spiders, thank goodness. <laughs> and, um, you know, some Facebook and Twitter. And uh, let me just start going through some, some sectors and stocks and see, you know, where we're at. So you look here at, at the overall chart of the spiders, okay? So what do we know? We know that here is the low end of the range. Here is the low end of your range. Okay, where is the high end of the range? Here is the high end of the range. Okay, here is a little bit of a descending type of, um, I guess, you know, trend line. And then this is the middle end of the range where it came in and basically held. Okay, what else do we know? We know that you had a big wide range bar uh, last week after this failed. Okay, so if you were looking for continuation above this flag type pattern to make new highs, you had to adjust here. That's when that broke. That's when some momentum was lost. If you did not adjust there, then in order to see commitment, you know, without puking it out the following day, you basically wanted to see this sort of hold. Okay, because then you had this huge breakdown that engulfed this entire range. And then we came in, I listed on, I think, Twitter or wherever. I'm like, you know, let's see if 204 holds. So you had a small doji right here. Then um, on Friday, you know, not much, an inside day. And then now what do you have? You have a, a gap up. So Moving forward, we'll see if the trade changes. You have a big gap up that didn't get filled, so we'll see if that stays unfilled, which could give us a little bit more follow through. You know, we know that basically it came right back to where it broke down from. If this was that strong, it would never have been able to gap up through it and, re and reclaim the moving averages. So it shows you that the range is still there. And um, now we're coming back into this spot where we're shortened week, window dressing. We'll see what's tomorrow. Um, you write down today if you would have. Got long in the spiders. I made some money in the spiders. It was not easy, okay? Um, I came in long, and I, and I actually got out into this little move. I got a little short, too. You know, said I'm not going to be cute. I covered, and then I flipped long. I think right in here, I'm like, you know what? You can go long. I did it on my red oral axis versus the low of the day. And, I, and if you just sat there all day, um, you did get a move up of <laughs> about 50 cents. So if you were perfect and you accumulated in here and sold into strength, maybe you could have made 50 cents. And then at the end of the day, it pulled in a little bit. So we'll see what's next. Um, but overall, you know, just taking a look at the range, we're still just, you know, in a, in a six-year bull run that's a little tired that um, some unanswered questions about, you know, when liftoff is and earnings for the season. So I guess this makes sense. Just try and take trades and play compelling areas. If you look at the Russell, what did the Russell do today? Um, the Russell, you know, reclaimed the eighth day, had a nice gap up and penetrated more than half, more than, you know, well more than half. So it kind of negated this, even though this was one day and came right back above this. So at this point, let's see if we could do some work up here to just, you know, look, repair some of the damage from that um, and, you know, see if uh, there's, there's more action to be done. If you sold up here when this upper area broke, um, perhaps on this small doji here, you got long just for a trade, not knowing you'd get such a big move. And if you entered here, you know what, you, you, you made some money today. Now we'll figure out if there's commitment to it. I guess the same thing for the MDY. Um, this is very close to the highs. Okay, so um, the, you know, the S&P went through the 50-day moving average below it. What did the MDY do? It held above, it showed relative strength, and now this already took back um, the, the whole day. If this was any, you know, if the bears had any control, Okay, I think that they would have, you know, had the pressure or the wherewithal to reject price here versus, you know, take it back. So not saying it's going to scream to new highs, but this is showing some relative strength. You know, another spot for 
relative strength today, I guess, with some banks. You know, you had J.P. Morgan at the front cover of, um, of Barron saying there's 30% potential upside with Jamie Dimon, blah, blah, blah. You know, here was your little reversal there. You know, got some footing here if you went long, you know, into this. Like, just like anything, if you went long for a small bounce thinking it was the end of the quarter, you, you know, you had lucky a good trade and, and got paid, and now I think you just stay with a little less. It reclaims the moving average. It still has work to do. Let's see what J.P. Morgan looks like. Um, didn't close on the highs, but I would say, you know, just like I guess here, you know, maybe try and be long versus this gap. If there's going to be any momentum for this to take out this area, I would think that this gap holds, goes sideways and goes. So right now, J.P. Morgan could be a focus. You know, Morgan Stanley, you know, this has driven me to drink so many times already this, this year where I did think here also that, you know, here was your, your resistance. Then you had this nice flag with the, with the what's it called, um, the stress test gap and, you know, boom, you know, you stopped out of it, gave you a red dog reversal right there. And if you got long on the red dog reversal, um, which I did not, you, you know, you had to move right back here. It still needs time. So that's that. So question is people like red dog, what do you, you know, what'd you do with your Facebook? What'd you do with your, your Twitter? Cause I was long both. Just so you know, when I have longs overnight and there's a big gap up, I typically sell a third or half into the gap up to book some gains. Cause you never know if the complexion or composure is going to stay the same the following day. So you sell some strength. Twitter was up like 40, 50 cents, was up almost a percent pre-market. So I sold some, I think like 50, 40. And then I said, I'm going to hold half and see if it holds up. Because if it holds the gap, there's a good chance it goes. Same thing for Facebook. Facebook was up a dollar, sold the majority of it. And then when they go red, I get out pretty much, especially if it breaks an area. And then I wait for it to make a pivot low for the first 15, 30 minutes. Because sometimes, you know, it fills the gap and then goes. And, you know, I tried that once in Twitter. It didn't work. And then Twitter went down, let's just, you know, go right into Twitter, went um, right down to, um, you know, uh, what's called below this area. So what I did, which, which actually worked out for me, um, is that when it was below 49, okay, I had a call spread on it. I was long the 48s, short the 50s, and um, I rebought the 50s when it was below 49 and it closed pretty well. So now I have the $48 calls, the leftover ones that I had from this nice move. Um, still, and uh, we'll see what happens in the next coming sessions. I think overall, it's a nice close. You know, it shook the tree, which these social media names do. You know, maybe another inside day or so, and, and I still think it's in the game to take out this high, but when it's down here in the depth and it looks like it's going to reverse and fail, you know what, you can get out of the way and then wait for it to rebuild. So I'm still in the Twitter calls of 48 calls, and I'm going to wait to see, you know, if uh, it shows me that, you know, it's going to hang in there more, and this was just a fake out to then make new highs. Facebook did the same thing. Facebook, um, you know, definitely choppy. And we've seen choppiness in fake Facebook before. It's not always just a clear cut momentum move above a level, above another level, and then just holds in there. So it's, you know, sh it shakes people around because this is one of the, you know, biggest names in the world. Uh, every professional underneath the sun trading it, every institution involved. So they're not going to make it so easy. So today they shook it up. What I did just to show you how you can maneuver today. Okay. So this was your uh, up open. Okay. I, um, I sold a little bit into it, right? Why not? Um, figured it would see some resistance at the prior high. And then um, right around here, uh, I think a few guys on the VTF were like, you know, Twitter's only up 10 cents. I think Facebook goes red. So on that bar, it was like, wow, that's a pretty big wide range bar. Let me take a little cover, sold some. And then once it got here, I'm like, you know what? Let me get out and I'll revisit. So there it filled the gap. And then it just continued lower. and. You know, I actually was out for the most of the afternoon. I did Fox Business. That's why I'm wearing this suit, whatever. And, um, you know, let's see. And then basically it would reverse. And, you know, I think this needs a, a, a little bit of time. But overall, hanging here um, is, is okay, considering where it came from. I don't think that um, they really want to do a breakout failure and call game over here. They're just going to make it a little harder. So now at least you still have 82 to trade against. Um, one thing I didn't come in that I'm leaving with is Apple. Apple, I was like, you know what, maybe they want to window dress this up. Maybe, um, you know, the, the range has been uh, building and rebuilding for enough time. And then if you look at Apple here, um, it's still uh, not, you know, broken out and it's still not exactly um, back in the game, ready for momentum. But today it closed in the highs, okay, and it was pretty strong. Um, and and it's, it might, this time maybe it breaks this descending channel here. Okay, I, I hope it does. 
Um, maybe if it opened up down a little bit and traded through this, you can get a meaty trade. But if it opens up, I feel like as a trader, you had to take some home long. So I did take home some long. Your next level, really, if it wants to run a little bit, you know, is 129. So it has some room. Just to show you how I maneuvered it, go to your five-minute chart. Okay. Um, and for those in the VTF, basically, you know, I got involved pretty quickly, like right around here, right around this 124.90. I tweet, I you know, I tweeted some red all access before 10 o'clock saying I'm long Apple versus the low. Okay, was in it, and then um, you know, it, it did a, a, a consolidation for the majority of the day. Okay, I wasn't on my seat when it broke above this, but I held what I was comfortable holding long. If you were looking to do an ad. Okay, so here's your tier one consolidation all day. A tier two would probably be above this. I'm not sure if it did happen right here. Uh, so, well, yeah, there it goes. Went above it and, and then closed really strong. So with that being said, you know, here's your feeler. There's your ad. Maybe you took off the ad at the end of the day so you don't have so much overnight risk. So if it opened out lower, you could buy back. But now it looks pretty good. You know, if they want to, you know, have, have this come back, you know, start gunning this now. This looks, this looks set up. There's a good setup here. So we'll see if it, uh, if it transpires. Elsewhere, you know, what did Amazon do? Amazon, yeah, still hanging around. Nothing so great. Um, Netflix, what'd you do today? Hanging around. Um, still, ever since uh, Netflix pretty much broke the upper momentum, it's been you know, a choppier trade and hard to deal with. Ever since here, we lost the eight day. This it broke below both. So now I guess you could draw somewhat of a descending channel here. Little, held a 200 day. Still not compelling, but there's little trades in there. Um, Tesla did what Tesla does again. It kind of um, punished anyone that was um, trying to press into the lows there. Um, this was when it broke below 185 and here was Friday's low and out of nowhere it just rallied and it's been it's very hard to, to, to press Tesla. You know, although it's somewhat broken and it's been in a downtrend, it doesn't mean you could press the lows all the time and make money. It's been better to sell the rallies. And at times you could, you know, when it broke this ascending channel there or when it broke here or when it broke there. So down here, you know, where there's a boatload of support and it still has to report earnings, shorts are a little scared. So, you know, in the, in the scheme of things, it still feels like it looks like it could be lower. But on a day when the Dow's up 270 points, you know, it, it definitely could be pushed around. So see um, where it goes next. You have 192 to 196 resistance, and then you have the downtrend line. So there's a little room there. I guess, you know, you could say the same thing sort of for Baidu, trapped in a downtrend. And, um, you know, see what happens here. It has some room to there. It's holding big support, um, just rebuilding. Not a lot of momentum, but, you know, that's, I guess, what goes for a lot of the names out there. Um, what did Starbucks do today? Starbucks. Um, yeah, wide range bar down, um, hanging in there, still a little bit choppier. I think some retail names like Target um, tried to make high. It's, you know, above the eight day, it's a little choppy. I don't trade some of these because you can see how choppy they are. What did oil do today? I think oil had a little bit of a move at the end of the day. Um, in my note, I think um, I listed what needs to be, what it needs to hold so it doesn't fall apart. And this was this low right here and it bounced off. It doesn't mean it's you know, going to make highs here, but remember that false breakdown that led to a nice move back to resistance. Now, I guess, it, I just think it's not a good trade. Just, just avoid this thing unless you're going to micromanage it and just know where it is because of the market. Even the XLE is hard to figure out exactly what it wants to do. You know, you have this wide range bar here and then it went sideways, looked like it was going to break down and then gapped up and held this level here, closing green. You would think that People are probably long hoping for some momentum overnight, which maybe this time it'll do it. And then you have some room here. But overall, you know, wide range bar held the top half of it. Perhaps that goes. Um, what did gold do today? Gold, um, you know, uh, after the false breakdown here, after this nice little engulfing spot, came back to resistance. Good spot to trim some, right? Um, people who tried to press it short when it filled the gap probably got a little extra squeezed. And now, um, I just don't think it's very compelling. If you have to be in it long, it's a lot of the moves overnight anyway, so it's very uh, dangerous. So intraday, though, 113.50 is a new support. You would think it would have to hold this, but again, this, this is under every moving average. The metals are broken, and I just think this was a reflex move of people trying to press short, so we'll see. TLTs, what'd you do? Um, now here is your island bottom, okay, after a, a, a break of this ascending channel here. If you sold it, when it broke the
the eight-day moving average. You weren't involved with this corrective process. And then if you saw this potential island bottom and got back in right there, here are these two candles stranded at the bottom, short stranded. People who wanted to buy the dip couldn't do it. And then all of a sudden it turned into a nice long and then uh, reversed. And at this point, um, you know, I don't think it's that compelling. It's in the middle of the range. I guess you could say it, it did hold this little breakout there. So I guess if you're in it, if you have a thesis on it, you have a thesis on it. If you're trading it, not really a compelling spot to trade. You know, this was your spot to buy it. And then remember, it broke above this 128.10. And then even into here, it got a little wishy-washy. It filled the gap and then uh, pulled back. And now it's just a, it's a hard spot. It's a coin toss. So I don't like to do coin tosses. So with all that said, it's been a little lonely. Brittany's out for the week. So um, guess who's coming? Jill Melandrino from the street, Wednesday and Thursday. She used to be on the morning call out with me, so I'm looking forward to that. And um, tomorrow I'll be by myself. We'll figure out, were they just making nice green dresses as we, end, as we exit the quarter? Or you know, it will be a bit more of a sustainable move where they just keep confusing everyone with these big spurts and then stop. Spurt, stop. Very frustrating, but that's the way the market is. Pick what you want to do. Pick your time frame, and there is money to be made as long as you are specific and have a plan, and hopefully I help do that with you and for you. Have a good night.